everybody, today I will be unboxing a new 34 inch SE3223Q monitor from Dell. Uh, the reason why I am bought a new monitor is because I bought a grand, brand new graphics card, which is the 12 gigabyte GeForce RTX 3060, and I realised something wasn't quite right as I was playing the games. I was playing the games on the highest setting, and for some reason it wasn't really giving me that much difference between my old graphics card. Less do I realise that it's down to the monitor, because these monitors are, I think, was it 920 by 1080p? And that's all you can actually see with resolution, so silly me. But nonetheless, I bought a, a new monitor, which I'll show you. And not only will be uh, doing a, a size comparison, as you see, this is a 25 inch monitor, this is a 27. And later I'll show you it all in comparison. We're gonna give it a go, we're gonna test if it's any good, see if it's worth the price. And um, also, we're going to change this whole setup to make it look a little bit better, so stay tuned. Right, so let's clear a little space here. So let's move my microphone over here. Now, I've got a bit of a weird setup because... Um, because... I've put all of this in the corner to save space in my small uh, office where I currently work, but we're gonna move some stuff around, hopefully make it look a lot better. <coughs> oh. ah. Okay, so this box is massive. I think I may have overdone it. A 34 inch monitor. I beg your pardon, it's a 30, I think it's a 32. Sorry, it's a 32 inch monitor. Uh, they're pretty big. They're pretty much, I haven't seen ones which are big. They go wide and widescreen, so you can go, for a long kind of Covex model, which um, I'm not really a fan of, but this is pretty much the biggest I can see and the cheapest for the price. I got this for 240 pounds. Uh, so just to run you through what this monitor is, so there's the sizing there. So it comes with, it's got a HDMI cable. It's either a HDMI cable or it's a display cable, we'll find that out later. So it's 31 inches by 5 because it doesn't take into account the frame. And it comes with a stand. Okie dokie, so we've got an instruction manual. There's no monitor so far, I do believe it's at the bottom. So there's instructions. Is this something how to take it out? All right, so it says, <laughs> so it's saying, um, put the stand on before you start taking the screen out. That's really good advice, actually, because I'm an idiot and I wouldn't follow that at all. Shows you how to do it, shows you how to uh, move it. So you can bend it backwards and forwards. You can only bend it forwards and backwards a tiny amount. So you might want to invest in a, a wall mount rather than rely on this. Let's see what we got here. We have got, Instruction manual. Look at that energy rating, just like my house. F. So we're not going to read the instructions. Um, okay, so we've got a a power cable which has that kind of foreign outlet. Foreign being uh, that's a European outlet. So uh, hopefully that doesn't come into effect. There's the real outlet. There we go. Proper. Okay, here's the cable. All right, so we've got HDMI to HDMI. I'm fine with that. Am I fine with that? Does that mean I can get all three of them working? Maybe. That could be a problem. Um, what's this? Oh, we don't know what that is yet. All right, okay, it's the back. It's the back panel of the um, of the monitor. What else we got? We got. Ooh. Now, it is that kind of cheap plastic, which I'm not a fan of, but this is the cheapest <laughs> monitor I can get, so we have to bear with it. Um, it does feel a little bit cheap, but it is a monitor stand, and no one's gonna, no one's gonna, not gonna damage your street cred by not having nice aluminium. Uh, this is plastic, I do believe this is plastic. It feels like plastic uh, base. Anyway, so that's that bit. Let's move this over higher. Now, this is the, uh, this is the actual stand base. Let's uh, no, no. Right, stand base. Again, I'm kind of 
That's that old PC case. You know that PC case you get at school? It's that kind of plastic. I don't think it's plastic. I'll have a look. I'll double check. Right, so it's put in this way for a reason that you attach the stand first, as you see here. So we won't be able to see the... Whoops. We won't be able to see the glorious size until I've accept, put the stand on. So I'm going to have to switch camera. Here we are. That... <laughs> Oh my. The stand was in the back. I've, uh, I clicked that all in. It all feels safe and secure. This isn't going anywhere. It's wobbly, but it's quite big. Now, I just have to bear in mind, this is big. Oh my goodness, 32 inches is very big. So this is 27. I know it's not quite lined up, but uh, the, the, TV, the screens are right next to each other. I'll turn them all on. Hopefully I can plug them all in and you can see the size difference, but that's what we're dealing with at the moment. It's got that. It's got a lovely thin exterior around the outside. It's not like this big blocky material, uh, big frame. It's got a nice thin frame, which means if you have a multi multiples stacked up, it's not, you're only going to have a very small line that um, separates them. So before we do that, let's have a look on the back and see what connectors we got. Oh, oh. That's very carefully turned out. Back panel shows you... Um, uh, just some basic bits and pieces, many different languages, not sure that really matters. Uh, this is going to hit. So we have got two HDMI cables, display cable, uh, display in. Uh, we've got um, sound, that's your, what's that called? It's your input, audio input. Um, I don't know the name of it, unfortunately, but you get it. It's that little kind of um, spindly little thing that goes in there for sound, and there's your power. So that's pretty much it. Let's fire this up and see if we can get all these monitors on. Got a feeling I'm gonna need another cable. Okay, so I don't have the cable for the third monitor, so we're just gonna have to deal with two, which is more than enough for the time being. Um, I'm gonna turn, uh, this is gonna be debut, so let's give it a turn on, on here, and see what happens. So it's all plugged in. Okay, it's on. Blue light on that one. No blue light on this one. Question is, have I plugged it in? Maybe we need to turn it on. Okay, the light's on there. I didn't turn it on. Here we go. So I was thinking, I was hoping that was just burst into life. English? Oh gosh, look at this. This is swanky. English, yes please. Yes please. Yes please. Yes please. Oh no, it's under here. <laughs> God, I'm such a boomer. Okay, scanning for signal. Wow. Okay, um, I want to give a reference how big this is, so I need to find something that is relatively um, in comparison with what you, uh, reference point. Uh, okay, let's use my hand. <laughs> right, so I've got relatively uh, medium-sized hands, so is this the best way of doing it? Not sure, but there's my hand in the bottom left corner here. Is my hand in the bottom left corner here, if that makes any any help. <laughs> right, so there we go. So I can give you, <laughs> there you go, so you can actually see the difference between these two monitors right here. Okay. So as the monitors are connected to each other, this is the uh, screensaver for ribbons. I thought I'd better <laughs> do that than show you my m massively untidy desktop. Um, so, I'm right close to it right now, and I can see the difference. It's a lot pixelated on the right. It feels like sharper and crisper. Right, good morning. So I've slept on it, and um, I'm going to give you my review of this monitor. Now I've got it all set up. There's a few things I need to do uh, to make it, uh, well, mount it properly, because I didn't have the cable for the 25, but uh, we'll get that later. So there are a few things I don't like, and there are things I do like, and there are things I'm just going to put in the middle. Let's go what I, good, I do like. So this monitor is really big, and it's really cheap for the price. And yes, it handles 4K. So I've got my Sony Vegas screen up here. I can prove to it what it handles, if I can remember where I go. There you go. So, here we'll, so it does go up to 4K. I presume this adds up to 4K, but this is what it's advertised as. Totally fine. Um, 
I like the sleek design. I like how it's small around the edge. So uh, it seems uh, very clear. It seems very crisp. So far, so good. Now, the things I don't like. Uh, there seems to be a fuzzy kind of white border just goes around the edge. I think this is part of the design, but it just seems a little bit off around the frame. Like, see this here? Like, I think you can see it in my phone. But there's this kind of weird white light. I don't know whether that's a problem or all the all the, the um all the monitors come like that. It's not too much of a problem. I've got used to it now, but that's a bit annoying. Um, the other thing was the the contrast, right? So this monitor here is pretty old, but it's very crisp and very sharp. Like you can see the colours on here compared to here. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but like, there's more. There seems to be a bigger backlight on the Acer than this monitor. Um, I just feel like I can. It, it's hard to explain, but my brain goes a bit funny when I try and read these documents over here, and then I go to here. I don't know whether it's my brain getting used to the size, but um, I'll give that a pass for the time being. But I'll just leave that in there just in case it re pop that problem pops its head up again. Uh, yeah, so. I don't know whether it's me or messing with the settings, but it feels a little bit faded, um, if that's the right word. I don't know the word is contrast. I go down here and I can start playing with the settings, okay? So I'm on 95 brightness, which just about matches this, but it does feel a little bit faded. And also I've gone down and I've gone to contrast and I've played with contrast and it's the best I can do to get like a brilliant white. See you later. Okay, so we are in um, amazon.co.uk. So there's different monitors available depending on where you are in the world. So we're gonna go monitor 32, um, oh, 42, oh, no, Jesus Christ, uh, 42, 42, 32 inch. Um, I didn't put 4K in, so these are all the budget versions. So under 200 pounds, yes, you can get a 32 inch monitor. Of course you can, but we need 4K because that's what we're all about. Thousand pounds, jeez. So here we go. So this is the monitor I bought from directly from Dell. As you can see, the price here. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to go. I'm going to show you all the specs, things like that. So this is. Um, so you've got, it's got 42K, 31 and a half inch, totally fine because that includes the half inch for the for the frame. Going down, oh, I'm here to look at the reviews. So it's all very. And see if anyone had the same issue I have. Now with reviews, you've got people. I mean, this is a really well-reviewed um, monitor. I mean, if you uh, uh, this constitutes the averages. So value for money, this, that, and the other. Screen quality, four out of five. Gaming, four out of five. Works well, contrast, not very good. That's, that's what I'm thinking. The contrast, it feels a little bit bleached and faded out. It says clear image, four out of fives. I don't worry about the five out of five, because you know what they're going to say. Okay, so I slept on it again. It's day three, and I've kind of come to a conclusion. I'm going to hang on to the monitor for a bit longer. Um, it's not as bright as I wanted it to be, and it's also not as sharp as I'd like it to be. And the best way to describe it is, if you've if you've never had a decent monitor before and you bought a monitor like this, you're going to give it about eight or nine out of ten because it's really really good. If you're like me, who's had an Acer monitor. Um, which has always had really strong colors and super bright and you've bought this you can definitely feel a downgrade so you're gonna give it maybe a 7 out of 10 um, but if you're a gamer and this is important if you're a gamer and you've got a really good graphics card you're not gonna see all the colors um, and you're really not gonna get the whole effect of your the, the capacity and the power of your computer and your graphics card with this monitor you're really gonna have to spend big money for that so under, so in the context of it being 240 pounds, it's fine, but you're not going to really get the total visual experience on this monitor if you've got a really good computer and you want to play those games on ultra, ultra 4K. So I hope that makes sense. I would use this monitor if I wasn't playing games professionally 
or I wasn't taking games really seriously. I'd use this monitor if I had needed to have one monitor and I wanted to divide, um, if I wanted to divide it up into multiple uh, tabs. Um, I would use this monitor if it was at the end of my bed and I wanted to watch films because it's massive and you can definitely experience the 4K. I mean, just look at the difference in quality between the, uh, the colors on the right and the center. <laughs> look at the black as well, right? I mean, I have increased the, um, the, the brightness to get the colors up, but now I don't have pure black anymore. I've got this kind of misty gray. So I hope this uh, monitor review made sense to some people. Remember, if you're experienced with monitors, you can just reinterpret what I'm saying and understand it from your own point of view. But this is really just a kind of a, someone who's unboxed something, want to experience from the first time um, uh, a 4K monitor on a budget. So bear that in mind, this was done on a budget. Well, I hope you like my video. Uh, I hope this offered you some clarification into buying monitors and this monitor specifically. Uh, and if you'd like to stop by on my gaming channel, do subscribe. I play old games, new games, and I try to make them fun. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye. Wake up. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. This is your Sony 4K. Beyond four times the resolution of 1920 by 1080, it will take you to another world.